to you by L&M, the modern cigarette that lets you get full, exciting flavor through the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Smoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Uh, you eating already, Chester? No, sir. Oh, why not? Oh, I didn't like to ask Alfred for no more credit. Oh. Yeah, I heard that you were at Chuck Beeson's faro table again last night. <clears throat> All right. Read me a sermon. I deserve it. I guess an empty belly will do you more good than a sermon. I tell you what, you can think about that while I'm eating, huh? And that's where I'm heading right now. All right, sir. But I think a sermon would do me good, too. You know, all about the evils of gambling. Mm Mm-hmm. It it kindly would lift me up, Mr. Dillon. The best one I ever heard was back in Prairie Falls. Yeah, well, that's very interesting. This this here circuit rider was a real hellfire and brimstoner. Come right into the gambling hall he did and stood up on the table. He liked to got shot before he finished the first sentence. Uh, Look, But he outshouted him and went right on. Took up a collection afterwards. Must have got forty, fifty dollars, but there was only one trouble. Yeah, what was it, Chester? Well, nothing much really. Only the money was in chips. See, he he could cash them or play them. He played them, and he won. That kind of soured everybody on the sermon. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to go eat now, Chester. Well, I'll be more back. There's to the story than... Uh, hello. Are you the marshal here? Yeah, that's right. Uh, do you want to see me? If you're not too busy. Uh, no, no, come in. Uh, this is Chester Crowdfoot. Hello. How do you do? My name is Ascom, Marshal. Clint Ascom. I'm mm-hmm. a gambler. Well, I kind of figured that. But uh, you're not from around here. I'd say maybe you work the Mississippi River boats. Huh? That's pretty close. The Ohio. Ah. Well, you're a long way from water here. <laughs> Thanks to the Santa Fe Railroad. But that's only a temporary necessity. I have a matter to settle. Oh, well, how can I help you? I'm looking for a man. I've traced him to this vicinity. Uh huh. Now, you know his name? That's all I know. His name is Cass. Jameson Cass. Oh, Jim Cass? Well, I never figured him to get mixed up with gambling. Uh, that's you do I... know him, then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah well, maybe no. you can direct me to him, then. Well, he, uh, has a place out in the country. Those aren't very explicit directions, Marshal. No, they're not. But they're all I'll get? Well, I'd like to know what your business with him is. It's a personal thing. matter. Well, sure, but, uh, what? You told me what I wanted to know, Marshal. He's here. I'll find him without your help. Ask him. Why do you want to kill Jim Cass? What makes you think I'd do? A man eaten up by hate gets a look in his eyes. I've seen it too often. Now, why? I've got reason. Better be a good one. 
You say you've never even seen Jim Carson. Nope. Well, he's a peaceful little man. He doesn't even wear a gun. And murder is illegal around here. I'll remember that. You better remember something else, too. Jim Cass is a friend of mine. You go anywhere near him, and it'll be a pleasure to run you clear out of the country. It wouldn't do any good, Marshal. I'll get him, sooner or later. Good afternoon. Well, what in the world? He don't mean that. I'm afraid he does, Jesse. But Why? There ain't a nicer, harmlesser little fellow anywhere than old Jim Cass. Now, what do you suppose could bring a man to hate him so? I don't know, but I better find out. Uh, Chester, you watch things here. I'm going to ride out to Jim's. Huh? All right, sure, but ain't you going to eat? Oh, I can do that later. You keep an eye on Ascom, and if he should head that way, you follow and warn me. Huh? All right, sure, I will. <laughs> well, Matt, how I just came down to eat with you. <laughs> What's the, uh, you going out? I'm just riding out to Jim Cass's, Doc. You are. Now, that's a long, hot ride to make for nothing. Now, what do you mean, for nothing? You won't find anybody there. I saw Jim Cass over the Long Branch not 15 minutes ago. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Today, all over the country, more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. And it's all because only L&M gives you full, exciting flavor through the pure white miracle tip. L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. So free up, freshen up your taste, live modern, change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke an L&M. It's America's fastest-growing cigarette. Have you seen Jim? Oh. Marshal? Following me? Well, I might be. Ask him. Um, Kitty, can I talk to you for a minute? Oh, sure, Matt. Is Jim Cass still around, Kitty? Oh, no. Oh, you know where he went? Home, I suppose. His wagon was hitched right outside. He got in and drove off about ten minutes ago. Yeah. All right, thanks. Well, what's the matter, Matt? Well, I just want to see him alive. Alive? Jim Cass? Uh, Kitty, do me a favor, will you? Yeah. When I leave, you see that that Ohio River gambler's entertained for a while, will you? Sure, as long as he's got money. Okay, thanks, Kitty. Marshal, have a drink. Uh, no thanks, Ascom. Marshal... I've never had any trouble with the law. I don't want any now. This has got nothing to do with you. A deliberate killing is the business of the law anywhere, Askin. He'll have his fair chance. Sure, house odds, huh? I told you, Jim Cass is not a fighting man. So you'll do his fighting for him? If I have to. <laughs> I'm sorry, Marshal. Sure, but you won't stop it, will you? No. You must have a powerful hate. I have. I could lock you up, you know. Mm -hmm. And postpone it for a few days, that's all. And as for running me out of town, I'm leaving anyway. To go out to Cassis. 
If you want to warn him, you'd better go now. So you can follow me? I can find him without your help. Ask him. I'm going to warn you. You harmed Jim Cass, and I'm going to jail you or kill you. Fair warning, Marshal. If you can do it. I can do it. Anybody at home? Hey, Tom! Hush up out there now. Hush up! Stop it! Who is it? It's me, Jim. Matt Dillon. Oh, Matt. Good to see you. What brings you out here? Uh, can I come in? Well, sure. I'll set the coffee to boil. It won't take a minute. Hey, come close to need it. Yeah, it sure is. Yes, sir. Gonna be a late winter. Must be something important to bring you way out here on a day like this. It is, Jim. Something about uh, me, Matt? Yeah. Well, say it. You know a man named Ascom, Clint Ascom? Ascom? No. A gambler, slick, young, dark haired. Oh, no, not likely. From Ohio, riverboats. No. Uh, I was back east, uh, Pennsylvania. A couple of years ago, you remember that. Yeah, I remember. I met some people, but I don't remember no gamblers. Not no ask them. Jim, is there any reason why a man you've never even seen before would want to kill you? Kill me? Yeah, that's right. This this fellow, this uh, ask him, he, he, he's here gunning for me? He probably followed me out here. Says he's got good reason. Well, it seemed to me like you ought to know about it if there was a reason like that. I don't know why any man I ever met wanted to kill me. Okay. That's good enough for me, Jim. What are you going to do? Wait for him to come, then take him. Well, it seems like I ought to help. No, you just sit tight. Well, at least I'd like to ask him why. Gee, you reckon that could be him? Yeah, maybe. I'll take a look. No, it's Chester. Hey, Tom! Shut up out there now! Stop it! Tom! Tom! Jim! Oh, howdy, Chester. Hi there, Jim. Nice dog. Say, uh, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, Chester. Ask him to you out like you thought. But as soon as he spotted the place he turned off, I come in to tell you like you said. Yeah. Now, that's my mistake. Now we've lost him. He's out there somewhere waiting for us to leave. Well, what'll we do? Uh, Jim, maybe you better ride into town with us, huh? And let a gunman scare me off my place. Something no Kiowa or Comanche was ever able to do. All right, Jim. Come on, Chester. We'll head back toward town. Yes, sir. But ain't... And then circle and come back. Oh, well, he'll uh, likely use that draw back by the barn. That's the way the Kiowa come in. All right, Jim. But you stay in the house now. Well, don't worry none about me. I ain't got my old scatter gun. Don't no, use it unless you have to, Jim. Come on, Chester. Free yourself of old-fashioned ideas. Why don't you live modern? Live modern. Live, live, live modern. Free up. Freshen up your taste. Smoke an L&M. Only the modern miracle of the pure white miracle tip can bring all of L&M's full, exciting flavor through to you. And that's the big reason why today more people are changing to L&M than to any other cigarette. Remember, L&M draws easier, tastes richer, smokes cleaner. So live modern. Change to L&M. Make today your big red letter day and start to live the modern way. Live, live, live modern. Smoke at L&M. It's America's fastest growing cigarette. Mm. 
you see anybody, Mr. Dillon? No, not yet. Now, wait a minute. There he is. Yeah. All right, you stay here. I'm going on up. All right, sir. All right, hold it, ask him. You're covered. Don't make a move. Where'd you come from? I'll just take that gun. Chester. Yes, sir. <laughs> My mistake, Marshal. I guess I underestimated you. I guess you did ask him. Chester, get the horses and we'll get Wait out of here. Yeah. Jim, I told you to stay in the house. A man comes to kill me, I gotta ask him why. Just holster your pistol, Matt. This scatter gun will keep him quiet. Now, wait a minute, Chester. like I say, Matt. You too, Chester. Mr. Dillon? All right, Chester. Maybe I'd like to hear this, too. Yeah, but I don't like the look in his face. All right. Now, mister. My name's Jim Cass. You tell me yours. Ask him. Clint, ask him. I'm supposed to know you? No. We ever met? No. But you got the notion to kill me? Then I'll do it. Not while you're looking down this gun. Now you're going to tell me why. Talk, mister. You killed my best friend. Without reason or sense. In cold blood. Well, that's a lie. I never killed no man. Jameson Cass of Kansas Territory. On the night of June 12th, two years ago, in a bar room on the Cincinnati waterfront. You pleaded self-defense and they let you go. Only it wasn't self-defense. It's taken me two long years to track you down. But that was an Indian. That was a Delaware Indian. He was my servant and he was my friend. The best friend I ever had. He was as good a man as you are, or any other white man. Jim, is this true? Well, Matt, ain't nothing to kill an Indian, you know that. You had no reason. Well, he, he jostled me and bothered me. Had no right being there at all with white men. Oh, I'll kill you with my bare hands. Stand back Ask now. Ask him. You're still taking his part, Marshal. You hate Indians, too. No, ask him. I hate killing of any kind. But Indians don't count. Is that it? If it had been my friend, I'd probably feel like you do. Eh? Not this murder. Ask him, did you ever think maybe Jim's got a reason for the way he feels, too? A reason? What reason? Well, out here there are plenty who feel this way. The situation's different. Indians aren't all like your Delaware. You take a look up there behind the house. That little grass plot with the flowers and the three headstones. Now, those are Cass's reasons. His wife and his two kids... And Kyle was put in there. Now, I don't hold with what Cass did, but what you're doing is no better. I don't care what his reason is. I come here to kill him. I'm going to do it. Ask him. All right, Mr. Indian lover, you will get your chance. Give him back his gun. Now, Jim. Stand back, Matt. This is between him and me. You stay out of it. Give him the gun, Chester. No, Chester. Jim, can't you see that I you're see making... I he ain't going to be satisfied short of blood. Well, now I ain't either. Now, wait a minute, Jim. Right, Matt. I'd hate to have to blast you. Use your head, Jim. Man comes to kill me. It's him or me. Mr. Dillon, that's a shotgun. Stay back, I told you. Put it down, Jim. Matt, I won't be stopped. Mr. Dillon, look out. Jim? Uh, Matt, I... I should have known you was faster than me. I'm sorry, Jim. Oh, you had to. But I, I figured I had to, too. Chester, give me your kerchief. Oh, here, Marshal. Take mine. No. Uh, ask him. Maybe I had this coming. I never thought much about that. Indian. Maybe I should have. You be quiet, Jim, and lie still. Marshal, I... Marshal, I'm sorry I caused this. It's a little late to be sorry, isn't it, Ask him? Now, why don't you get out of here? 
All right, I'm going. Uh, Matt. Uh, is he dead? No, no, he just fainted. Chester, ride into town and get Doc out here as fast as you can. Will huh? you let me get him, Marshal? Least I can do. All right, ask him. Go ahead, but hurry. Mr. Dillon, you think he'll really bring Doc back? Yeah, Chester, he'll bring him back. My, you took an awful chance with that cousin shotgun. Well, it was a gamble, Chester. Yeah, but one you could have lost. Well, maybe you better read me a sermon on the evils of gambling. <laughs> Our star, William Conrad. When your child raises his hand in the classroom, does the teacher have time to answer his questions? How many questions go unanswered in your schools because teachers in crowded classrooms just don't have the time to get around to each child? This is only one of the serious situations that's going to be faced again and again this year in schools all over the nation. Every child deserves the best possible educational facilities. Though a good deal has been done since the post-war years, increased enrollments for this term threaten to wipe out all gains. Our schools are packed by the largest enrollment in history. There will be critical shortages in schoolrooms, staff personnel, and transportation unless you do something about it. Join and work with your local civic group and school board now. Through the PTA and other groups, you can take action to improve the schools in your own community and help find more qualified teachers who are so desperately needed. Don't waste time. Your child's education is at stake. Don't leave it up to the next fellow because you're the person who can help improve our schools. This has been a public service message by CBS Radio. And now, William Conrad. <laughs> 